Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. When I do a lot of my videos, one thing that you guys probably don't get to see very much, unless you're a customer that comes in here, I do a lot of experimentation, trying out different products and different things and see how they work. And a few of my customers have seen me do this and said, you need to put that actually on video and that might be a great help. Sometimes I don't spend as much time with a certain little subject on the video portion, but I always like to try out stuff first because you don't want to get you know some model ship or something that you spent weeks and weeks building and then you go to do the water and you mess up totally the water. So I'd like to do little projects with water, which I'm working on one right now that I'll show you in a, a future video. But one I wanted to share with you guys today is I'm um, doing plywood or scale plywood. Now about two weeks ago I built up the Wingnut Wings Albatross D5 and did some plywood looking finish on the inside, but that wasn't really gonna get seen very well. It was more in the shadows. But there were some markings on there that had a lot of bare plywood on the outside, some strips, and one plane that was almost completely all bare plywood. I thought that'd be really cool looking to do, but having a good process to do plywood, you wanna make sure it looks really, really good. So after I uh, finished that kit, I started researching a little bit more on the internet and was able to find some stencils that I think are going to work tremendously. And what we, I've got a few samples right here, I was just messing around just before we started the cam, uh, filming this, and within a matter of minutes you can come up with some beautiful plywood. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you in depth how we make this plywood and how quickly and easy you can do something like this. It's just a matter of using these SWS Super Wings, their stencils for plywood. They've got two different styles that they have out there, and they're just incredible how nice the plywood looks, which you're seeing a picture down there right now in the corner of what the plywood looks like, and that was just a matter of just a couple of minutes. So I've got some uh, .20 styrene that, and a knife, a couple of colors uh, from Tamiya, and our stencil, our airbrush, and we're ready to make some plywood. So let's get started. Okay, to start off, we've got our just our thin styrene right here, which is going to, in this case, uh, represent our model airplane. And what we're going to do is we're first going to just score with the back of an X-Acto knife some panel lines, basic. And this is just so we can get some different patterns to show off and different ones. We're just randomly doing this here. There's nothing, nothing specific. And the back works pretty good on this because we don't obviously want to cut through the, uh, the styrene at all. Okay, you can see we have uh, two of the pieces, of the two of the panels, I should say, masked off, ready to go. We also put some paper underneath here so we don't get any overspray onto our cutting mat. And then it's just a matter of first going ahead and painting the base color. Now for the base color, we're going to use XF55 Deck Tan, but even as light as this paint is right here, I think it's actually a little bit too dark. So we're gonna first cut it 50% with just regular flat white, and then we'll also make one with about 75% white, one on each panel right there, kind of blend them together. And you'll see what I'm talking about for a base coat. Okay, we put a little piece of masking tape to divide the two sides, and we're first going to paint the darker of the two colors, which is approximately 50% deck tan, 50% flat white. And you don't have to have a perfect paint job for this. Even kind of blotchy can sometimes work in your advantage to make the wood look more realistic. Then after we get that side painted up, we are going to remove the masking tape let it completely dry and then just lightly put it down on the other side and paint the the lighter of the two colors this time only 25 percent deck tan and 75 percent white okay we have our two colors the the lighter and the darker now we have our mask or a stencil I should say all ready to go and what I've done is I put a layer of Tamiya tape on either side because there's a natural curl in the photo etch and I found the quickest way to mess up your your stenciling job is to have the the piece not touching completely 
In fact, we'll even put a little bit down here on the bottom too, just to make sure, and the top, so it's not gonna curl at all. And now that we have that all nailed down, we are going to use Tamiya's XF59 Desert Yellow, and we're gonna put a light coat, just, just as easy as can be, right over the top there. Okay, when you paint the brown coat, you want to keep your airbrush as perpendicular as possible to the stencil. You don't want to come at it from any side angles because if you do that, you have the possibility of blowing some of the paint underneath the stencil, especially when the grooves are going from side to side like they are here. Okay, now we've let the paint dry. We can carefully pull the mask off, lay it over to the side. Now you can see right off the top that it's done a really nice job with the grain. We have some nice grain effect, all kinds of different pattern going throughout. But there is one more thing we need to do to this to really make it pop and look like plywood. And that is going to be putting a coat of clear orange over the entire thing. Now before we do that, I'd like to go ahead and just spray another coat of a gloss coat, the TS-13. Just a, a quick little mist coat to seal in any of the paint job. That way we don't have any type of bleed through between the different layers. And I should have pointed out too, after we put the initial two coats on, uh, you know, the undercoat, we put a thin coat of TS-13 on that as well. And that way it just keeps everything from blending together. Okay, you can see we're starting to lay down our clear orange, X26, and we've thinned the clear orange down to the exact same ratio as we would any other Tamiya paint. And you'll see I'm going back and forth, just doing a, a round pattern, just to kind of break it up so we're not having any solid areas of orange over the entire thing. We want it to look like a, a natural product. And there we are. We've let the uh, the paint dry a little bit and I took it outside and now shot it with a coat of TS-80 dull coat, which is not 100% flat, so it still has just, just a touch of that uh, slightly semi-gloss finish that plywood sometimes has, especially when it's made to look like this outdoor plywood like you find on an airplane. Now, there's lots of other options that you can do with this stuff, especially you can change it up by um, this one I spilt a little bit of paint on, but this one has a yellow, clear yellow sprayed over it. And this is one that, an earlier one I did, I wanted to show you. This is what happens when you don't tape the stencil down on the edge. You can see it gets very, very um, blurry right on the edge here. And that's because there's paint flowing through in all different directions. And it also over in here as well. So we tried it out a couple of different ways. And that's why it's very, very important to tape it completely flat. And then there's a few other ones too, using different colors of of paints. But I, th what after all the ones I've tried, I really like using the the setup that we have with that, with the clear orange over the uh, deck tan with white mixture, and then using the desert yellow as the actual grain pattern. So I think it works really well that way. And since we're showing off some new product, this is another thing I thought I would show you guys. Uh, my friend John over at MasterpieceModels.com was kind enough to send us out a set of their scale rulers. And they come in 32nd scale, 35th scale, 72nd scale, and 48th scale. Each one is obviously an individual ruler. It's clear so we can put it on top of stuff and still see where we're at. Uh, but these work really great if you're trying to do scale projects. Like let's say in 30 second scale we wanted to make this, cut this to a a 2 by 4 or a 4 by 8 piece of lumber as it would be like in a uh, depart the uh, Home Depot type store. So we could take it and measure it off and go, okay well this is almost 9 feet of of particle or plywood, I should say, and we can cut that down to size. And these are very, very helpful when you're doing, especially dioramas. I love using that, and the 35th will come in real handy. And you can basically duplicate 17 feet in 35th scale. This one will probably get used quite a bit. But if you're interested in something like that, you can go over to masterpiecemodels.com. They have a complete set of four, so you have all your four major scales for uh, doing things and they're available right now. Okay, a couple of other quick thoughts before we go on this. First of all, you can see that the stencil is very flexible, so this should be no problem pretending this is a fuselage, wrapping this around the fuselage and being able to paint any type of shape, you know, within reason on it. Now, 
when it comes to cleaning this thing, you have to be very, very careful. In fact, they recommend that you just just soak it in thinner. Uh, because this is Tamiya paint, I've just been spraying it down with Windex or like a Lysol household cleaner, and that'll take the majority of this stuff off and then rinse it under water. You don't want to rub or scrub, definitely, any part of this right here because there's such fine, fine detail in that that you'll easily be able to rip up what part of the photo etch and then you know making it unusable and also the thing I would recommend too is going ahead and experimenting and trying out a whole bunch of different colors I did that just before I did it like I was showing you trying out different colors this is with a lighter amount of uh, orange on it and you can see the two different colors once again the light and the dark so you, there's all different ways you can even do some darker plywood to make it look like older you know more worn out plywood using darker colors and then the clear yellow like I mentioned all of that could really work out to your advantage so hopefully you guys found a little bit more in-depth video helpful for yourselves. That way in the near future when we do a wing nuts, wings kit and we're doing some plywood or any kit that we have plywood on it, that way we can just do like a minute, minute and a half showing the basics on it, but you can revert back to a video like this to show you the real in-depth part of it. Now, uh, just real quick as well, too, I will show you. They have two different patterns that are available. This is the one, obviously, that we just used. This is a brand new in another package. And this is another one that has more of a straight grain pattern. Uh, we carry both of these here in my store, and you'll be able to find these online. They're from SWS Super Wing Series. You'll be able to find those online easy enough. And although it says 30 second scale, you might even be able to get away, you definitely be able to get away with 35th scale since they're so close. And maybe even the top end of like 48th, you might be able to use them on. So, hey, I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.